Short for the lead. Short. Tipped. Taken. Halliburton. Halliburton. This is to win the game. Indiana wins it. What a fucking game, man. Honestly. Pacers versus Lakers. Undoubtedly get one of the games of the year. Especially one of the best fourth quarters of the year. Or best quarter of the year. But do you get what I mean? What a game this was. Lakers, you know, starting the game. It, like, you know, this Indiana team, you know, people would be like, Phew. you know, some casual would be like, wow. Lakers, you know, blew a 17-point lead against, you know, the Pacers. Wow. Like, they just lost. Like, they're done. Like, no. Bro, Indiana's a playoff team this season. If, you know, they keep the team together. You know, kind of ironic how these teams played. And, you know, you know. Anyway. Lakers just collapsed, to be honest. It's really... They're close. I just, I, you know, I read this thing. You might have seen it as well, that Lakers think they're days away from being a championship team. I kind of believe them. Like, wow, I've not seen them play, like, how do I explain it? This is, like, what some of the best basketball this trio has played together. You know, I kind of said, but I said before, you know, you know, that first season, they're going to be instantly better. You know, they might, you know, not win the minor games, but they'll be playing together better as they've had a whole year to, you know, gel together, learn, it, learn from their mistakes now. But this game is just very unfortunate. Really, they lost. Obviously, they lost it. I mean, they lost the game. But it was really done when it was like the second minute. And they they just missed the layups. They're leaving people open. Russell Westbrook, though, had a great game. So did AD. Like, their big three just played amazing. But, you know, unfortunate how they lost. We'll get into, you know, the reason why they actually lost and what they could have done better. But this was just good to see Westbrook, you know, playing. He definitely had a chip on the shoulder. No, this whole talk of this whole season is just, you know, Westbrook, Buddy Heald, and Miles Turner, and, you know, the Pacers and Lakers. It's been a whole conversation this whole season. And, you know, the off-season as well. So, Westbrook definitely had this chip on his shoulder. He came in and balled out. It was very clutch. And I think he hit, I think he scored their last point. No, it was LeBron, sorry. Westbrook was very clutch in this game. He played amazing. Someone that I've been talking about recently a lot, though, is Tyrese Halliburton. That man is... Wow, this is his breakout season. This man... It has potential to be better than Chris Paul. That's, it, is a, it is a good comparison. They're both point guards. Chris Paul is a point guard, like, certified. Tyrese Halliburton is a point guard in the making. 60 points, 40 assists, and zero turnovers in his last three games. That's fucking crazy. That is... <laughs> that's not normal. But he has made history. He's the first player to have, ten, to have three straight games of 10-plus assists and zero turnovers. That's fucking elite, man. This man is playing all NBA basketball. He has to make an all NBA team. Like, Behrman in the all star team, he's like, he could be an all star starter, to be honest. But he is just playing such elite basketball. Hands down, probably their biggest reason they actually won this game. Obviously, this whole season, they are working well as a team and a unit, but this man is lead. This guy is an MVP caliber player right now. So, his most recent games 24 points, 14 assists, 7 rebounds. Like, oh my God. 15 points, 11 assists, and 5 rebounds. And then 21 points, 15 rebounds, 15, 15 rebounds, 15 assists, and 5 rebounds. Like, wow, oh, wow. This guy is playing elite basketball. This guy is, this is, like, best in the world. Obviously, he's not the best player in the world, but this is, like, top 0.1%, like, skill level for basketball. You know, actual production in the NBA. His playmaking's out of this world, the way he just sees other, you know, other situations that other players don't see. The way he's, you know, confidently making some risky passes. And, you know, and you know, the safe pass as well. It's just elite. <laughs> but an also matchup this was Benedict Maffrin against LeBron. Obviously, Benedict Maffrin said this at the, you know, before the season even started. Like, you know, impact wise, like, you know, just stats wise, he literally was better than. Obviously, you know, he's a 20 year old. LeBron's fucking old, getting that old man age right now. But it's, it's just funny. This guy, like, this guy's one of my favorite players in the NBA right now. Just, you know, his confidence. You know, this is, you know, the stats he got. 23 points, 8 rebounds, 45% from the field, and 38% from free. When LeBron had 21, you know, shot 33% from the field. You know, somewhat, you know, yes. Did I play him? Did I play him on their own floor? <laughs> this guy speaks stuff into existence. Like, his confidence. That, his confidence is going to be even skyrocketing now. But I love the way this guy just, you know, scores the ball. The, the confidence he plays with, you know, I would say a plus defender. You know, he, you know. They all fit so well together on that team, that young core. So obviously the big story is really how the Lakers actually fumbled this in the whole first place. It really starts in the, you know, the fourth quarter where they were up 110 to 106 with 220 left. And, you know, I think it was LeBron who missed, you know, somewhat of a layup. 
boom, they go on, you know, the Pacers start going on this run. Bad rotation, missed shots, which they should really be making, to be honest, you know, especially that LeBron shot that he missed the layup. He did have, you know, one in the clutch. But this whole story is just Lakers' bad rotation, leaving people open, and once again, just missing the shots. Like, Indiana, Indiana went on a 13-3 and scoring run just before, you know, they actually went on to win the game. Just, you know, it just says, Lakers kind of fumbled in the fourth where it, it actually matters the most. Also, in the NBA, comebacks are very, not common, but a game is not over until it's over. But one thing I have to say is LeBron has to have the ball more. It was like, don't get me wrong, Westbrook is playing well this season. Westbrook is, like, deserving enough to have the ball, you know, in the clutch, but... He's somewhat of a streaky, he's a somewhat of a streaky shooter and a bad decision making, making, maker. You know, he had that shot in the end where LeBron, you know, LeBron was kind of open. He was asking for the ball and he just wasn't really looking like, as he shoots, he's an MVP, but in that situation, you have to give it to LeBron, you know, possibly the goal. AD maybe, but kind of what they're looking for, you know, you need more of the perimeter play. But yeah, LeBron just has to have the ball more. He did, you know, when he did have the ball, he scored. And, you know, obviously it was unfortunate how, you know, they actually did lose, but... LeBron just needs to touch the ball more in these situations. He's like, he's literally one of the best for this. He's like one of the guys you want on your team when this happens. But obviously one of the best buzzer beaters this season comes from the rookie as well. Crazy. What, like I was saying earlier, it came from bad rotation, leaving shooters open. You know, they set the play, Indiana's making a play, you know, leading to bad rotations. Miles Turner, who's shooting very well this season, is right on top of the key, has a wide, oh, he, he did miss it. He bricked it. Pacers player rebounds a pass to Tyrese Halliburton, dribbles, boom, no rotation, you know, bad rotation, you know, a bit too much, not late, unfocusedness, not exactly knowing your surroundings, boom, a Pacers, that play, Pacers rookie, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, Pacers rookie, shout out to you though for making that, that's a good shot, a very good shot, over LeBron as well, Pacers rookie, Tyrese just passes to the rookie, doesn't even hesitate, grabs it, shoots, scores, with LeBron contesting as well, LeBron, you know, did play good D there, it's just unfortunate how it happened and then boom, just like that, Lakers is a game. But I think, I will say this now, I will say this now, this is a good thing to happen. I think the Lakers are going to go on a run. I think this time in a month, Lakers will be in playoff, that playoff circle, you know, that, that like ninth to fifth seed. I, I, I do believe that. I think this will, I think this loss, it's better they lost this game than actually win it. Obviously, yeah, good momentum, but they've been punched in the fucking face now. Obviously, last season was a shit show, but now they've been getting good momentum, playing a very good team. You know, they were up by 17, dominating them, looking very good. Blow the lead, you know, some bad decisions and bad rotation. Boom. Now they've just lost a buzzer beater. That, like, that's going to hurt. That's going to sting. Don't be surprised the Lakers start going on some runs now. I, I do believe that will happen, led by, you know, their big three. And, you know, their starting lineup now, you could trade, you know, they do have some young guys on that team. I don't know. I don't know about trading Westbrook anymore. I think he was very valuable. Obviously, unless a team offers you something you can't exactly refuse, then yes, take it. But it's not the if if you know the trade deadline ends, Westbrook's on your team. You should still be feeling somewhat good because he is showing that he's you know flourishing in his role. Undoubtedly, six man of the year with Benedict Mathurin. Obviously, you know two six mans going at each other. I think Lakers will definitely be going on a run. But you know, if you know some rebuilding teams want some of their veterans off, or the veterans want to leave, you know, Lakers have some young. I mean, they don't exactly have the best assets in the world. It's kind of looking rough for them. Maybe you know, if they trade for Jay Crowder, let's say, I don't know exactly how high they get out to be honest. But they just need to make a trade. I would kind of avoid. It's kind of weird how the narrative changed. I would avoid a Westbrook trade right now for the time being and see your other options of what you can get. But it's a tough loss. Hopefully, they do come back. That was it for this video. Make sure you liked it if you did enjoy it. I'll see you later.